I also excuse me for for a check no, a check -end. Hello everyone, it's your girl Jay and today I am here with my wrap up part 3 for January 2021. I read a total of 15 books this month so I split it into 3 wrap ups so this is the last one if you are interested in books 1 to 10 wrap up part 1 and 2 will be linked down below. So without further ado, let us get started. The first book I have to talk about is all the Stars and Teeth by Adeline Grace. I freaking love this book. I give it five out of five stars. This book follows Princess Amora Montara who has been training her entire life in order to wield soul magic. She wants nothing more than to be the next High Anormancer, which is the Master of Souls. If she achieves this, then she would be deemed the next protector of the island kingdom of Visadia. But during the ceremony to determine whether or not she is worthy of this title, things go terribly wrong and she is thrown into the castle dungeon. Desperate for a second chance to prove her worth, Amora flees with a pirate in the hopes of stopping a newfound enemy who is planning to destroy her kingdom and it's like the story of that. But like I said, 5 out of 5 stars, I really freaking love this book. I went into it completely blind other than knowing that mermaids were somehow involved Involved in the story based off of the Little Mermaid tale on the cover. But I was pleasantly surprised to find out that there was so much more than just mermaids. There's pirates, there's magic, there is monsters, there's just non-stop action throughout this entire book. In this world there are seven different magic systems or types that somebody is able to wield but they are only allowed to study one type of magic or else it can consume them. I just found this concept to be so intriguing I was so fascinated by curse and blood magic. I just thought they were so freaking cool. I will definitely say that there is a trigger warning for blood and self-harm. It was a lot more violent than I thought this book was going to be, but it wasn't like too much that I couldn't handle it. And I have a pretty weak stomach when it comes to blood, so you know, take that information as you will. But definitely just be aware that there's a lot of blood, there's a lot of gore, and there's a lot of chopping off limbs. <laughs> I also really loved that this wasn't like a light-hearted action story. There's also some discussion on some deeper topics like abusive relationships, sexism, menstruation, uh, sexual assault, among other things. I will say that some of the twists in this story are extremely predictable and I was able to call them very quickly in the story, but that surprisingly did not interfere with my enjoyment of the story. I think that the characters in this book are so well done and I loved the banter that they had between each other like literally all of the characters not just like two of the main characters like everybody was so funny and had me giggling throughout most of the story. I think that the found family elements in this story were also really well done and I think that they are probably some of my favorite that I've read to date. I love Demora. I think that she is a great female lead character. She was very flawed but very loyal to her kingdom and you could really see her struggling with that for a lot of the story. I also really freaking loved Bastion. He is probably one of my favorite characters of all time now. He is just so charming and witty and I cannot wait to see more of him in the next installment in this duology. I think that Farrakh was also a great character but I really felt for him throughout this entire story especially when it came to all aspects pertaining his relationship with Amora. I think that what he's going through really sucks and I think that there's like hints of a different romance gonna come come to light, which I'm really excited about for the next book. I also think that he really grew into himself as the story progressed and he became a lot stronger as we read on. I also think that the Mermaid Vitea was a kick-ass female character and honestly, I think that there could be so many spin-off books following her and her story. She was just so fascinating and interesting and I really want to know more about her, so like, Adeline Grace? please write more about just her or well like all of the casting characters but she was just so cool. I think I definitely have a girl crush on her because she is just like ugh, 
chef's kiss. The romance in this was also like enemies to friends to lovers, which enemies to lovers and friends to lovers are two of my favorite romance tropes. So you know I was shipping this real hard and there's also like a twist that comes in at the end that is definitely going to complicate things in the upcoming book with the romance. So I'm very, very excited. Overall, like five out of five stars. I was fully invested in this book. Definitely recommend you check it out and I'm pretty sure that the second book is coming out sometime in February this year, so pick that up too. The next book I read was The Family Upstairs by Lisa Jewell. I gave this 4.5 out of 5 stars. So this book follows Libby who on her 25th birthday discovers that she is inheriting a house with a dark past. Years ago when police arrive on a crime scene they find three adults dead in the kitchen and a 10 month old little girl in her crib with a note attached to it asking whoever finds her to take care of her. No one knows where the other children in the house House disappeared to and nobody has been able to find them since and it's like the story of that mystery. So going into this I was not aware that it was a cult book and I freaking love cult books so I was beyond ecstatic when I figured out that that's what the premise of this book was. This is definitely more of a slow paced thriller so if you're looking for action packed can't stop turning the pages because of the action type of situation this is probably not the book for you but it is one that you need to keep reading just because you need to know what's going to happen next because it is so enthralling. I'm personally becoming a very big fan of Lisa Jewell's writing style. From what I've read of her books so far, she usually has two main narrators in the story that are known to the reader, and then there is a third narrator who you don't know their true identity. And I think telling the story that way just makes me personally so much more invested because I want to know who this third person is and how they relate to everybody else. I really liked the three points of views and how it skipped from the past to the present. I was solely invested in these three narrators and how they all related to each other and I just really really wanted to know what happened to Libby and her siblings in that house. My favorite character was definitely Henry. I think that he is such a complex and intriguing character. I loved being able to dive into his mind and see how he viewed the world. He's a character that throughout the entire story you're not really sure how to feel about him and even when the story is done you're still not 100% sure where he lands and like the vibe he's giving off and he was just the epitome of an unreliable narrator which I am a big fan of so I loved him way too much probably. Overall I really liked this slow paced domestic thriller. If that's not your jam, you might not like it as much as I did, but I definitely recommend it if you're into the slower paced thrillers because it was real good. So 4.5 out of 5 stars. The next book I was not a fan of, but it is My True Love Gave to Me. This is a 12 holiday story anthology edited by Stephanie Perkins. And um... Yeah, I was not a fan of this, like I said. I gave it 2 out of 5 stars. The majority of the stories I was bored with, I did not care about. The only two that I actually enjoyed was Jenny Han and Stephanie Perkins' stories. It just did not vibe with me and I skimmed most of them, so... I do think that the cover is really cool though because like all of those people ice skating are the characters from the stories and it was fun to like find them all on the cover while I was reading. But yeah, the stories inside were not not good times, so two out of five stars. The next book I have is The Bone Witch by Rin Chupeco, and I give this 3.5 out of five stars. I just want to start off by saying, uh, hello, this cover is uh, freaking gorgeous, and I love it so much, I just want to, like, display it on my bookshelf for everybody to see. But this follows T, who accidentally resurrects her recently dead brother during his funeral. This is when she discovers that she is a Dark Asha, or better known as a Bone Witch. When this happens, a more experienced Bone Witch named Michaela takes T under her wing and basically teaches her the duties and responsibilities of becoming a Dark Asha. And it's like the story of that. This was a very interesting story. It's told through the eyes of an older T, through flashbacks of her time 
learning to become a dark Asha. She's telling her story to a traveler and we get flashbacks from T as well as in between the chapters we get her talking to this traveler and like giving us more information about her story and where she is now. She is currently exiled and planning something big and throughout the whole story you're trying to figure out what this big thing is. The pacing is rather slow so it does take a while to become invested in the story but it is very interesting to discover more about the Dark Asha and why they are so important in this world. I think that the idea of the Deva and how they come back to life to wreak havoc on this world unless destroyed by a dark asha every couple of years was a really cool concept. I also really liked the idea of the heart glasses that everybody had to wear in this world and how it was linked to their emotions and abilities and I also thought it was really cool that Tia was able to read them but not everybody had that power. I really liked the sibling bond between Taya and Fox. I think it was very apparent that they cared very deeply for one another and I think that it was really cool that they could communicate with each other through their bond. I also think that the story was a little bit repetitive which is why I only gave it 3.5 out of 5 stars because most of it was just hearing about Taya's classes and there was very little or very rare action scenes so it was very slow. But we're definitely left off with a major cliffhanger, so I am intrigued to see where the story goes from here. I just have to find copies of the other books in the series so that I can binge them, but yeah, 3.5 out of 5 stars. And then the final book that I have to talk about in this wrap-up for January is The Empress by S.J. Kincaid. This is the second book in the Diabolic trilogy. I ended up giving this a 3.5 out of 5 stars, which was very disappointing because I believe I gave The Diabolic like a 4.5 out of 5 stars so this was definitely not as good as the first one. It picks up right from where the Diabolic leaves off which I don't want to give anything away but like the title of the book kind of you know tells you where that left off. I just didn't feel invested in this story for the majority of the book like I think it took way more than half like probably like here until I actually felt like I cared about what was happening. It was very slow and none of the action from the first book was really taking place because this was more of a like political intrigue kind of thing. I really like Nemesis as a main character. I liked her a lot better in the Diabolic. Just the way that she delivers information to people is so dry and just straight to the point and I just really liked her. But I did think that she was kind of blinded by love in this book which just kind of bothered me because I was like, girl, where where are you from the first book? You're so different and it was disappointing. Tyrus is still my favorite character in this world. I think that he is just so intriguing because you never know what is true with him. He is another very unreliable narrator because he is so good at playing everybody around him. I do think that the politics were interesting in this book and it was intriguing to see how everybody was backstabbing each other and trying to figure out how to get on top. This is another book where we are left on a huge cliffhanger, but the story could go in so many different directions, so I will probably be picking up the third book if I can find a copy of it because I do want to know how it ends because, like I said, it could go in so many different directions, so I'm intrigued to see where the author takes it next. But yeah, not as good as The Diabolic, but still a fun time, so 3.5 out of 5 stars. Alright everybody, so that was my part 3 of 3 for my January wrap-up 2021. If you're interested in the first 10 books that I read, they will be linked down below in parts 1 and 2. Let me know down below if you have read any of these books and what you thought of them, and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!